The following program contains graphic material. Viewer discretion is advised. This man will leave the lives of three women shattered and the futures of at least 11 children in disarray. Along the way, a teenage girl will be sexually abused and a family nanny will kill herself. They didn't have the antidote. This was like the Wednesday and she died on the Sunday. He fooled those around him into thinking he was a CIA secret agent, also working for the British. In reality, the only spying he did was on the women in his life. William Jordan was able to track his wives by bugging their telephone calls, by having access to their computers. But this was no simple serial cheat. As one woman's bank account emptied, he'd simply turned to another with terrifying threats. I sold my flat, I sold everything I owned. They had threatened him with taking the kids and ripping bits off them if we didn't pay them money. Will Jordan was the conman thief and bigamist whose lies devastated lives. Will Jordan is a hit with women. He was charming, he was intelligent, he was funny, he was polite, you know, he opened doors. Everything was just very smooth, but also very calm. Um, and he was just utterly charming. Mary Thompson is not the first to feel that way. In the 1980s, in his native New Jersey, Jordan dates a lot of women. But few know of his habit of spending other people's money. In 1983, he's jailed for writing a string of bad checks. Although William Jordan is not a serial killer, he's a predatory serial offender with many, many different types of offending to his name. And, in, and as such, we should consider him a lot more dangerous than we actually do. That danger comes at first in the form of devastating lives and livelihoods. There was Beverly, there was Cynthia, there was Laura. He fools each woman into thinking she's the only one, so they don't mind bankrolling his needs. When these women first met William Jordan, they were open to having somebody in their lives. He was able to tailor himself to their particular needs, their desires, their wants, and perhaps he would have appeared as some kind of wonderful Prince Charming coming into their lives, a once-in-a-lifetime man, and they probably would have fallen head over heels in love with him. Willing and able to manipulate women, by the late 80s, Jordan is adding a useful skill to his armory, computer programming, though self-taught. He's very good. I think this is a very, very technically able individual, probably right at the cutting edge of what was happening. So there is nothing that he wouldn't have known how to exploit. Jordan sets up as a self-employed IT consultant. He doesn't make much money. By 1990, one of the women Jordan has been seeing has had a baby with him. And she's found funds in her bank account have mysteriously disappeared. Charming women and using their cash as his own becomes the Will Jordan career plan. William Jordan is a man who shares an awful lot of characteristics with what we, with what we would describe as perhaps a sociopath or even perhaps a, a psychopath. He has learned how to manipulate certain types of people. He has become very skilled and very adept and incredibly plausible. Jordan embarks on a 15-year catalogue of deceit. The internet will become the most powerful tool in his conman kit bag. He will prey on a string of women and use it to fool them into believing an extravagant claim. Meet CIA secret agent Will Jordan, soon to be licensed across two continents to steal, cheat and abuse, and then to hide behind a smokescreen of espionage at a time of war. In the case of one of William Jordan's wives, he upped the ante in terms of his control and he started to tell her things about the Taliban and the CIA, the, those kinds of things that she would have perceived as a threat to her safety and, and perhaps even her life. 
In 1991, Jordan begins his latest chapter of deception in Washington, D.C. There, he meets a British woman who practices the Mormon faith. She's recently divorced a husband who works at the Pentagon and has a generous divorce settlement. She's now looking to share her life with somebody new. Jordan fits the bill. We went to church every Sunday, so I didn't think anything other than, gee, somebody's answering my prayers, <laughs> actually, is what I thought. What he saw in her was an easy target in some ways. She had some money put aside, and she was trusting. She was a Mormon, uh, and she welcomed people into her lives, it seems, and uh, she welcomed uh, Jordan in, and he took advantage fairly quickly. After 48 hours, he proposed. I really hadn't felt anything like this before. I mean, here you are. This is Washington, D.C. You're having a guided tour of the Capitol. All of the things that you see and visualize in a movie, you're standing in the middle of. Will Jordan would do and say exactly what the impressionable English woman wanted in order to win her trust. He couldn't have treated anybody more politely as he did me. You were put on a pedestal. He seems to have presented himself as someone who will fulfill all their dreams. And, you know, in doing so, he, he was able to seduce them utterly. As Jordan applies his trademark skills in Washington to convince yet another woman that he was her Prince Charming, the other women in his life have questions about money, unpaid bills, and missing child support. He has no answers. It's time to move on. He asks Michelle to marry him and skips the US for the UK. There, he joins his new wife's Mormon community, posing as the charming American who's good with computers. Children follow. It was a decision to interview a children's nanny which establishes just how dangerous Jordan's silver tongue can be. This one particular girl came, and she was interviewed, very pretty girl, sort of very bouncy. She was from New Zealand. It turned out that she had a troubled past with children of the same age and I didn't want somebody that had been through what she'd been through. It wasn't suitable to be around babies. Jordan, the sexual predator, had other plans for the vulnerable girl. He puts her up in a London hotel. The couple begin an affair. Despite the nanny knowing he was already married, he suggests to her that they too marry immediately and move to New Zealand. There was no mention of divorcing wife number one. He was promising her things that, in the end, he couldn't deliver. And she started to realise that things weren't quite as they seemed, and tragically, it had uh, a terrible effect on her. Within about eight weeks, she realised that he wasn't going to leave me, and she turned up at the house, having swallowed, I think, 36 paracetamol. An overdose of the tablets leads to a pitifully painful death as the body's vital organs collapse, one by one. They didn't have the antidote. This was like the Wednesday and she died on the Sunday. I think someone like William Jordan probably doesn't have the same understanding of good and evil that everyone else does, in, in, that they're unaffected by it. And I would imagine he would give you a very plausible account about why he had done what he had done. And what he planned on doing again. Influenced by others in her Mormon community, Michelle forgives him. By 1995, she's had two children with Jordan and wants them to have a father. The family eventually do take on a nanny. Jordan wastes no time. I had found out that he'd had an affair with the nanny. He'd produced two children. When she was eight months pregnant, I took her in. The bottom line was the children mattered. And it didn't matter whether he had three mistresses that were pregnant. Jordan's ways with women may have been written off as something his wife could cope with for the sake of the children, but his next move was something even she could not ignore. It's one which establishes further his true evil. The conman and sexual predator indecently assaults a 13-year-old member of his Mormon community. You could almost forgive murder in the right circumstances, but there is no excuses for paedophilia. There is nothing because it's a choice. You know, it's not a, a, a compulsion, it's a choice. He's arrested. He admits his guilt and is sentenced to a year in jail. But, amazingly, Michelle allows him back after his release. He was able to worm his way back into Michelle's life. And Michelle, too, was convinced by other members of her community that she should take Jordan back. 
which is perhaps testament to his power and his ability to manipulate people. As a Mormon, you're supposed to endure to the end and you, you forgive. By 2000, after his latest release from prison, use of the internet has exploded, creating new avenues for the self-employed Will Jordan to exploit. He is about to apply his computer expertise into fooling more women, and he's to play a new card. Secret Agent Jordan, the CIA spy on a mission. It wasn't like he said, hey, baby, I'm a spy. Everything was played down to the point that I sat going, OK, right. Will Jordan doesn't pursue women for sex alone. He's been married to his English wife, Michelle, for a sometimes tragic, always eventful eight years, when she uncovers a hole in her bank account. I am very canny with money, and I had um, a sizable nest egg saved up. I had a debit card that was attached to this account, and I just put it in my jewelry box. I didn't use it, didn't need it. But my card disappeared, and he was withdrawing thousands and thousands whenever it suited him. As her money runs out, Jordan fixes on another source of funds. He has trained himself to be an expert hacker. An email exchange with Jordan could be a dangerous thing. Jordan turned his attentions to other women and using his IT skills, internet dating websites and his ability to get information about other women. He came across Mary, who was a successful professional single woman, and he saw her as a challenge, but also someone who perhaps could be mined for, for even more money. Some suggested I'd do internet dating. And then I got this email from Will Jordan, um, which was charming. With her guard lowered, Mary Thompson unwittingly allows Jordan into her computer and thereafter to unpick her mind and her life. We emailed back and forth for about two weeks. And we started talking on the telephone. And it was very relaxed, very breezy. Almost all the people who've approached uh, stalking helplines, stalking support groups, have found that they have had their computers invaded with a Trojan or something that is observing their, their activity online. Even to the point where someone may be watching you through your Skype camera all the time, even if you think it's turned off. In the online relationship which followed, Jordan displays a remarkable understanding of Mary Thompson's likes and dislikes. She agrees to meet. He'd gleaned information about her using his IT skills, and he sold himself to her as the ideal partner for her as she went forward in her career. We just absolutely hit it off, and every book I'd read, he'd read. Um, you know, we arranged to meet two weeks on. Jordan's interests make him the perfect match, but it's no coincidence that he knows what floats Mary Turner Thompson's boat. And his particular skills seemed to indicate he was very good at then knowing what would be acceptable, desirable to those people that he was researching. The email I got when I got home was that he was completely bowled over by me and he just thought I was fantastic. And uh, he sort of just took it from there. Hello, I'll have some flowers for you. I think within a day or two days of, of that first meeting, I received a dozen roses. And I got cards and emails and texts every day, and he was extremely attentive. Mary Thompson was hooked. Jordan has yet another willing partner, but he has a problem. If he is to have a relationship with Mary, how does he explain away absences which might last for months to Michelle? In 2001, as NATO and the Western Alliance prepare for war in Iraq and Afghanistan, Jordan tells Michelle of a work opportunity with the British Ministry of Defence. He calls up and says, guess what? Somebody saw my work and said that I need to come work for the MOD. Who am I to say otherwise? Michelle was able to believe in William Jordan's tale about working for the MOD for perhaps two reasons. One, that she'd previously married someone who worked in the Pentagon and so knew perhaps not to ask too many questions and, and knew that things had to be kept secret. But Jordan also used world events that were going on at the time to his advantage. He fabricated an email from one of the ministers and sent me an email. He went on further to create um, a telephone that answered with a tape recording for MOD. I was getting text messages from MOD Relay. To further fool his wife of the fabricated career in intelligence, Jordan dreams up a terrifying threat. As a Secret Service agent, Jordan and his family naturally would be a target for the Taliban. I was told that there was Taliban in the local area. I'll have a weekend backpacked, be ready to go in an hour. 
Shh, you know, we have to move now because they know where you are. He doesn't stop there in his determination to fool Michelle. He seems to have the sort of access to intelligence that only a spy could have. He once had me go to Trafalgar Square. He was babysitting at home at the time. I don't know how he did it. And he said, the yellow van to your right. It was a yellow van to my right. The deception is complete. Jordan now has freedom to come and go as he pleases, giving him time to further woo and wed wife number two. Within two weeks of meeting him, he actually proposed to me. Um, but I was very hesitant to say yes because there'd been a few times that we'd arranged to meet and he hadn't turned up, or he'd, you know, and had some strange excuses about work and everything. And so I became a little bit suspicious. And she discovers a home address for him. So I actually drove out to Gullen to see this place and saw this massive house with these child, children equipment in the garden. And I had um, just immediately thought, he's married with children, and drove back home, rang him and said, you know, gave him hell, saying this is, you know, because we were now engaged. What happened next left successful businesswoman Mary Thompson speechless. Jordan invokes the name of another intelligence agency, the CIA. The way he told me about this house was he said, you don't have to believe anything right now, all right? Everything I tell you would be proved in time. However, please just don't ask any questions till I've finished. And so I sat there listening, giving him, just fascinated to hear what kind of excuse he could come up with. And he, he started to tell me that he in fact worked for ODCI, the official department of central intelligence for American government. William Jordan was absolutely light years ahead of everyone else at the time. You know, there were only ever a handful of people at the time who could have done what he did. And he showed me the ODCI website. He showed me all sorts of things around uh, on the computer. And meanwhile, my mobile phone started beeping ODCI relay, ODCI relay. And constantly, about 20, 30 times during this conversation, my phone was beeping with this, this update, SIM updates. And he told me how he was recruited, how he was trained, what he did, and, and how it all worked. And even though my mind was screaming, this is just surreal, it was all very laid out, very you know, practically and logically. Um, so it wasn't like he said, hey, baby, I'm a spy. It was just really, everything was played down to the point that I sat going, OK, right. The spy who loved her had convinced Mary to become his latest wife. The woman she had seen was just a cover story, part of his spy work. And if Michelle ever saw him with Mary... You've got to understand that Mary and I had been told that each of us would cover wives. <laughs> to her, I was an agent and his cover for down here. And to me, she was an agent and was the cover. I mean, it sounds really bizarre, but when you're in it and you're living it and people know what you're doing, where you are and everything else, you buy into it. Well, you're brainwashed into it. All the while, the internet is Jordan's friend, his web of lies and deceit supported by the web itself. The technology will have assisted him very much in juggling relationships because the time is no longer a factor. So to travel between two homes is not an issue anymore because actually you're performing uh, multiple roles wherever you are. It's, it doesn't depend upon your physical presence. You know, it's just your online presence that is necessary to maintain a relationship if you are living away. So the technology allowed him to maintain several relationships online. With two women in the bag, both with decent-sized bank balances and a working cover story, how many more hearts could he hope to capture? Yeah, we were talking about getting engaged, and we were talking about what kind of, you know, wedding dress that I might wear. Will Jordan is about to get some news which will make his life a little difficult. I found out that I was pregnant, and one of the things he'd said is that he was infertile and incapable of having children. So this was quite a stunning piece of news, and when I told him, he nearly passed out because he was so shocked about it. And he was called away to uh, Israel and the Palestinian territories. By 2003, back with Michelle, Jordan continues the pretense of working for the Secret Service. He never lets his guard down. Even asleep, he stays wired. 
Jordan has convinced her that his behavior is to do with war work. We rally up the kids, you do the this, you behave, you do what you have to do to support the troops fighting away from home, which is what I genuinely thought I was doing. Throughout this time, Jordan has kept a close watch on each wife via the internet. It's vital to him that he knows what they're doing, spending, saying. His genius for IT gives him control. He would have been able to access all of the programs, all of the computer applications that were being used by the women he was targeting. He would have known where the back doors were into all of those things. Um, so really, he would have taken control over their whole systems and every communication they made out of those systems. So their wider network of friends, um, access to all the utilities they needed to run their household lives, absolutely everything. Michelle and Mary rarely saw William Jordan without a phone pushed to his ear or a computer in front of him. But while he used those devices to maintain his role as a secret service agent, what he was actually doing was keeping tabs and perhaps spying on the other women in his life. But accessing files and emails is not enough for Jordan. What does every top spy need to keep an eye on those he's observing? A network of cameras. Now, when you're filming someone, you're getting information that the, the person being filmed or the person being bugged thinks that nobody's going to have. And that's a totally different kind of personal and intimate information. William Jordan was able to track his wives, compile activity schedules, probably, about what they were doing. And this didn't just mean he was able to see what they had done, it meant that he would be able to begin to predict what they would do next, because everyone behaves in patterns. He was building up a complete picture of his victim, um, a picture probably bigger than the picture they had about themselves, which would have given him the ultimate power to manipulate them, and he was very good at that. How many of us actually are our full selves with anyone? So to have access to that information that, that is all around you, to all your contacts, you know, give someone a huge advantage if they want to appear to know you well and also be the person who's the answer to your dreams. The master conman's plan is working perfectly. He knows the every move of the two women in his life and they now accept that he's away for long periods. He was away from almost the entire pregnancy. Um, he came back once in December and then I gave birth alone, the first daughter. Three months later he came back and he met his daughter for the first time. And then we got married a few months later than that, and uh, we moved into a new house. For two years, from 2003 to 2005, Jordan carries on his double life. He's now selling his IT skills legitimately. He got a very good job at Microsoft, was earning a lot of money. We moved into a beautiful four-bedroom house uh, where I had my office and I was set up now as a self-employed consultant. Um, and we, we had a, a very, very good lifestyle for a few months. <laughs> well, it's classic. Four parents, all swinging their children. Three of them are standing in front of them, taking photographs, and one is standing behind texting. <laughs> if she had known who he was texting and what he was saying, she may not have laughed so loud. Meanwhile, Michelle, alone with five children, remains stoical, loyal to her man. I'm stuck in this place where I am the, the wife, the mother, and in that role, you feel that you take it upon yourself to, to sort of keep everything together, because a lot of women do. A lot of men work away from home, and mothers are the main pillar of the home life, and that's what I did. And there are bizarre weekends when he arrives home, promising nights in hotels, only to be unable to pay the bill. Though that was not the reason he gave Michelle for sudden departures. We were in one particular hotel and we went out for dinner and we came back and he had somehow managed to convince the manager to tell me that agents had been, searched the room, they'd found out where we were, we had to move. Being hunted by Islamic terrorists becomes quite the theme for Jordan, and one allowing him to keep up the anxiety levels in both women to maintain his level of control. You've got 9-11 that happened and then there's July the 7th bombings and you have all sorts of things going on that I then am feeling much more personally connected to because of what my husband is doing. Um, and so the, the, the terror capacity has gone up. I'm now feeling very much under pressure. I now have a husband away abroad in 
war zones and was very, very scared for him. Not only have they been exposed to physical threat that they have perceived and they have been hounded and undermined in many ways, but also what will have happened is that their psychological armour, the feeling of safety that allows us to live a normal life, to step outside the front door, that armour will have been pierced. Jordan now plays the card he's planned all along. He frightens Mary into parting with a fortune. He came across somebody at Microsoft who knew him from a previous assignment. And he said that they had now got our address and our facility and where we lived, where the kids lived, where I was, pretty much on my own. And that they had threatened him with taking the kids and ripping bits off them if we didn't pay them money. So I had to start coming up with money to give him, to give to them, to keep our children safe. I sold my flat, I sold everything I owned, I even sold my life insurance policy and almost every day he was ringing me or texting me saying, need more money, you know, this has happened, that's happened, this will be the last of it. But he's bleeding both women very nearly dry. <laughs> it's time for another wife, ah. time to know exactly what to say to get another woman down the aisle. I couldn't say, oh, it is love at first sight, but I could say, well, actually, this is a really lovely person and he does make me feel quite good. So, yeah, you know, maybe this might be the one, yeah. Somebody else with means finds herself with a man who knew exactly the right thing to say. Two women are convinced that their husband, the same man, is a spy on active duty. The two wives know nothing of each other because of his subterfuge, because of his lies. The reality of William Jordan's deceptions is that far from being in places like Palestine, which he'd tell one woman he was, he was actually seeing another woman at the time. So while Mary thought he was abroad in a daring mission, he might have been seeing Michelle and vice versa. He's also taking money from their bank accounts. They are rapidly emptying. Time for Jordan to turn his attentions to woman number three. Denise King is being wooed by email, internet chat and phone. The web has created another platform for Will Jordan to exploit his talents. He turned yet again to internet dating and here he met Denise King, a woman who'd recently received a substantial redundancy package. As ever, he knows exactly the right thing to say. He said he'd studied the cabal, um, which is something that I've been studying for quite a number of years, and I quite enjoyed it, and uh, I do believe in the spiritual side of life rather than, you know, religion, etc. And he kind of came across and told me all about his studies in Kabbalah and how he was a spiritual person. William Jordan's behaviour is so far beyond the parameters of normal behaviour in terms of what's acceptable, in terms of what most people can tolerate. Generally, no one thinks they're the bad guy. Who, what, there will always be justification, there will always be rationalisation about why people behaved in a certain way. Which means he can play happy families with one wife whilst raiding her bank account, keep a second wife and family, who believe he's away at war, on hold, and set about marrying a third time. We're talking about getting engaged. He sent me a picture of a wonderful engagement ring. Um, and also talks about marriage and, you know, we were talking about what kind of, you know, wedding dress that I might wear. And where would the money come from to pay for the engagement ring? The wife he'd left back in Edinburgh, still fearful for the life of her children who were threatened by Taliban terrorists as a way of getting at their secret agent father, she would do anything, pay anything to keep her family safe. I gave him everything I had. I, every penny I borrowed money off my parents, uh, you know, to give him money to keep my children safe. I literally gave the shirt off my back. It was 198,000 pounds that I had to raise to give to him. Still, the arch manipulator was not finished. Secret agent Jordan now wants money from wife to be number three. And he knew that she had it. I got a message from him asking me could I loan him £4,000 to put into his business. Um, and I, I was kind of, at first I was, oh God, you know. And then I had kind of this argument with myself about, well, should I, you know? And then I was like, well, actually, you're seeing him, he's supposed to be like your boyfriend, so would you not want to lend your boyfriend, you know, some money to help him out with his business? 
I kind of juggled it about and I thought, right, OK, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll let him loan him the £4,000. It didn't really occur to me why, why, how does he know that I've got £4,000? You know, I just kind of went for it and, you know, unfortunately, loaned him the money. Having got the money, Jordan disappears, all the while keeping an eye on his three women. He knows Denise is growing suspicious. He's following her life online. So Agent Jordan comes to the rescue. Got back in touch with me and said, oh, actually, you know, uh, I, I'm sorry I've been away. You know, I've been stuck with, with all this secret work that I've been doing for Microsoft and the MOD. Um, but I found you this work, um, you know, through my company. Um, you know, we can sign up and you can start work for them. So, right, OK, fine, that's absolutely fantastic. But, as he had done before in America and twice again in Britain, William Jordan was lining up somebody else to fleece. Wife number one in his latest life as a secret agent was now penniless. She couldn't keep up the mortgage payments. Her home was repossessed by the bank. I'd lost my house. I'd lost the house in my hometown, near to the parks. It was beautiful, it was large. I'd lost everything. And we ended up, uh, within weeks, being sort of sleeping on my friend's floor. We were homeless, we were broke. We had everything lost and taken. The sociopath is without remorse. He's wrecking lives. It seems nothing can stop him. He would be able to home in on somebody and manipulate them, get what he wanted from them, totally control their lives probably in the end because that would be how he would feel uh, the most comfortable was having complete control and he would be able to do this multiple people over long periods of time and he would probably rather than creating some big master plan would compartmentalize each of the different lives that he had using very very similar stories and very very similar behaviors to manipulate certain types of people in 2005 after 15 years of masquerade and manipulation jordan makes a mistake that will begin the unraveling of his unbelievable web of deceit He's driving a Mercedes-Benz car, officially owned by Mary, and in need of repairs. One day, armed with the credit card of an now nearly destitute Denise King, he heads to an Oxford garage to pay for repairs. As money promised to Denise from Jordan failed to show up, she was increasingly living hand to mouth, and it all came to a head when cash that she thought had gone into account then disappeared quite quickly afterwards, and she turned to her bank's fraud department. And I was £800 had just gone like that. That was a payment of £800 to Mercedes Benz. So I went to pieces. I was completely inconsolable um, because it just struck me who it was. There was only one person who I knew, Oxford, Mercedes Benz, you know, it's like a ton of bricks dropped on you. For 20 years, Jordan's lies have gone undetected. Would his round the clock vigilance keep the law and a string of wives at bay? Will Jordan's wife to be number three finds her bank account has been raided. The source of Denise's missing money was explored. The net finally tightened on William Jordan. Police found out that he'd been using her credit card without her authorization. And there are more shocking revelations to come. The police accessed the vehicle and apparently searched through it and they found details of other women that he was seeing. Also that the vehicle was registered to his wife I bought a car for him and it had broken down and he'd used somebody else's card to pay for the repairs. They asked Mercedes Benz to get in touch and tell him, you know, to come and collect the vehicle. And then he did and he got arrested on the spot. They started looking into things more deeply and found that he was married twice. They found papers in the car pertaining to this other wife who I had already been informed was actually an agent and was a cover story that got him into the country in the first place. And it sounds so bizarre. I didn't know my William had been arrested until he didn't turn up for tea. And I received a phone call to say that there were three unmarked police cars in the driveway and could I come on fairly sharpish? And um, they proceeded to search the house. They were looking for credit card. I think they thought that they'd stumbled across um, a credit card fraud thing. Gradually, more ugly truths begin to emerge about Will Jordan. 
And they also ran a records check which showed he was a convicted paedophile. I couldn't believe that he was a paedophile. It actually, even now, yeah, even now, it really, it makes me feel sick. The fact that he was, you know, lying to me, that he was incapable of having children, you know, and then there he is with umpteen kids, you know, um, that, that, that he had by two wives because he was a bigamist. I was phoned by the police and told that my husband was a sex offender as well as a bigamist and a, a con man and that I would have to deal with and talk to social services. I suffered for three months having to deal with social services, believing that I was complicit in having a paedophile living with me. I, I am absolute terror in complete, I mean probably closer to a nervous breakdown I've ever been in my life, trying to keep a brave face and a happy face on for my family and friends but also getting to the stage that I knew I had to make a decision between my husband, who I loved and believed, and my children that I would not lose. In one credit card transaction, the false worlds of Will Jordan fall one by one. Denise realizes she's been conned. Probably took, in total, about 30,000 pounds or thereabouts, maybe slightly more. And then there was actually my monthly wages that I was supposed to be getting. Um, and I wasn't getting out hardly anything. I almost lost my home. My home was almost repossessed. Um, they wanted to come in and take my television, my furniture, everything. I would have been left with nothing. And I had to beg and plead with them not to do it. Um, and I had to work and work and work and get the money together for them. Mary has discovered that her husband was a bigamist and a paedophile. I think the only way to describe it is like trying to jump over the Grand Canyon in one step. It just It's too big, it's too huge a gap between where you are and what reality is to take that step. You have to believe, you have to trust in what this person who you love is telling you because the reality, the, the different story is just too far beyond anything you could believe. And Michelle now realises that Jordan's trips to war zones were a complete fabrication, one which allows him to systematically steal from her. Over the time, I've probably lost about $150,000. It was time for the women to talk. Michelle makes the first move. It was the now or never moment, and I picked up the phone and said, um, Mrs. Jordan. And she said, yes. I said, well, I'm the other Mrs. Jordan. And she just fell apart at the other end. She said, I'm the other Mrs. Jordan. And I said, oh. And she said, have you been told I'm an agent? And I said, yes. And she said, I've been told you're an agent. And it was those eight words that crumbled my entire world. Jordan's victims decide to get together. We sat down and I couldn't take my eyes off Zachary because he was the spitting image of my now 14-year-old. She had five children by him. She knew that the nanny already had two children by him. She knew that he had a son in America who he'd had when he was only 17 years old. And we started to piece together the amount of children that, they, that we knew that there were. And at that time, we knew that there were at least 10, and including my two, being my, my son being the youngest that we knew of. Um, and so it, it, it did start to become a much bigger picture just from that one meeting. But it also made me realise that what we knew, the two of us, would only be the tip of the iceberg. As the women compared notes, the true scale of Jordan's deception becomes apparent. Not a CIA man, not an MOD man, but a man who took half a million pounds from three women, leaving them all destitute, who had seduced countless other women, one of whom killed herself, who had crashed and hacked his way into the online lives of his targets, and who had sexually abused a child. He stood trial for fraud and bigamy offences, was sentenced to five years in prison, and deported from Britain to the United States, where today he is a free man. It's unknown if he's married again. William Jordan is about as evil as you can get. I do think he's quite an evil character. I think he preys on people because he knows that he can. Um, he researches people and it takes uh, an odd, evil, kind of empty person to do that. 